I'm Zen. You're I'm, Zen. I'm Zen Extral is um, teaching me some of his yoga ways. Welcome yeah. back to Weekend Smile, guys. The music industry has been greatly affected due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're now joined by Lowell Omar Lawson, acting president of the Jamaica Federation of Musicians and Affiliates Union, JFMAU, who will discuss current issues affecting the entertainment sector and how to chart the way forward. Ooh. That's a whole heap. Yes. That's a whole heap. Boy, that is such a lot. Yeah. Mr. Lawson, good morning. Welcome to Weekend Smile. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Thanks what? to the Weekend um, Smile team for inviting the JFMAU Union um, to discuss such a, a, a sensitive but important topic in this juncture in our in our entertainment industry. Yeah, in indeed. And before we get to discussing that, it's Bob Marley's birthday. Your three favorite songs. And you can't say one love. Um, you can't say one, one love. love. One love. You can't say one, one love. love. Mm -mm. Can't say one mm -mm. love. No. Say one All right. Love. Um, Zion Train. Hey, okay. Um, Concrete Jungle. Ah. Mm -hmm. You know. And Get Up, Stand Up. Get so Up, that. Stand Up. Stand up for your rights indeed. Now, Mr. Right. Lawson, what was the music and entertainment industry like before COVID-19? So we're going to do some comparisons well, now. Well, the industry was thriving. The industry was popping. Um, everybody was doing well. We had some things we needed to have worked on, but we were preparing to work on those things to make it a more inclusive industry. Yeah, because we're, we're just about, and I think we're on the cusp of making that big breakthrough in terms of our music on the global scale. Because I remember last February, um, Reggae Month being, you know, concerts every week, you know, in the middle of the week, Emancipation Park. We, we had something up. every day. Every day. Every day. You know, so we're on the cusp of being so great, but COVID-19 happened. So what, in your opinion, has happened since then? Well, in my opinion, um, COVID-19 happened and it happened with a, with a fright. Everybody got frightened, um, including the government. Everybody got frightened and then we made some quick decisions um, to not have COVID spread. Mm -hmm. But I think with, within making those decisions, um, we, um, we made some mistakes as well. Okay. You see, with, 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 um, with challenges comes opportunities. And that is why the JFMAU union is moving to have an election on the 7th of, of July to make sure that we use this opportunity to bring the industry together. So we have a meeting on Sunday. Okay. However, I think the, 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 the industry now needs to look at how we are going to pivot and move away from what is happening now in terms of the decision that the government made and um, what needs to be done. Because if we look across the world, we'll see that um, economically entertainment um, is losing billions of dollars and, and we can't continue like this. It's almost a year now. Almost so there are things year. that we can do to, 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 um, to change what is happening. So, Mr. Mr. Lawson, how would you then describe the current state of the music industry right now? Um, the current, yeah, current state. The current state of the industry right now is dismal. It's okay. dismal because people are not working, so therefore households are suffering. Okay. And it, and it's 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 right across the the. The island and right across the globe right across the globe but i know that when you speak of entertainment and music we're not only speaking of the artists we're also speaking about musicians engineers um promoters you know a lot of persons come into in into factor you know so who would you say has been affected more or um has everyone just been affected on the same scale i would say at this point the, the, the musicians who really play are affected a little more, but I think on a large, everybody in entertainment is affected right now. Yeah. Everybody's um, salary has, has, has gone, and for those who had a little saving, that's gone as well. It's almost a year now. So I think everybody is suffering at this point. Hence, 
we need to learn to live with COVID like all the other industries that's living with COVID and putting in the protocols. I think we need to put some protocols in place um, that will work with the health ministry's um, recommendations, but tailored to entertainment. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned earlier that there are, you, you guys have plans in terms of fighting back, well, not fighting back in the true sense of the word, but plans to get the industry back on its feet and moving forward. Um, what are some of those plans? Well, some of those plans is we look across the world and we, we nothing is new under the sun. Um, there was a, a pandemic um, about 100 years ago and people learned to move forward. I, I saw pictures and, and, and read documents. So one of those plans for entertainment is that we are, we are saying that we can have a concert now in, in somewhere where we can social distance and we have people drive in to those concerts. Once it's, it's, it's a family, they can stay together with social distance, everybody else. And also, there is, there is the, 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 the testing. I spoke about, about this when the industry was just locked down. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we, a lot of people didn't follow up on it. But I do believe in tailoring a, a way forward for entertainment, testing has to be a part of it. If we look at what the WHO is doing across the world, free testing is being done. Our government is supposed to take a look on that and to say, if free testing is being done, um, find a way to tailor that to our entertainment industry so that we can do testing before people come to our concerts, just like how the, 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 the aviation industry is doing it. Planes are testing you before you go on. We want something like that for the entertainment industry. Yeah, but, but they will say to you that it's probably difficult to test everyone all the time because of the resources that, that aren't available and the money that it takes to pay for yeah. it. So how does and that then work? You, we also have to consider that sometimes persons don't even want to be tested. They're afraid of, of getting tested. So how, how are we going to balance that now? We, we cannot allow fear to have the rest of the industry suffer. Okay. people who are professionals, people who are willing to do what needs to be done to make sure that it is safe. We know now from, from this um, COVID-19 disease started that it was a fear factor why things went the way it went and no one has looked back on it and we have just been left to fend for ourselves, right? So we can allow fear to stop us from open the industry. What we need is responsibleness. Um, I saw in the in the paper where they are saying, show them where the, 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 the um, parties are and they will prosecute. I think a better way to approach that is for us to create some jobs where we'll have, we'll have people who we, we employ to, to make sure that the protocols that we are putting in are being observed. So we'd actually be creating some jobs. The entertainment industry has been helping every other sector whenever they are in, in any kind of problem. Now the entertainment industry needs help. I think the government and the rest of the sectors, the big business communities need to come on and help the entertainment industry. Yeah, okay. and, I, and, I, and I agree with that. And you made a good point. I think res being responsible is one of the things that I think as a nation we lack. Responsibility and discipline. So I think that is where things are kind of difficult for us. Yes, yes, Mr. Lawson. Mm. You mentioned a lot. We're looking forward to possibly seeing some of these recommendations implemented so that we can, you know, get back the entertainment industry up and running as, as quickly as possible. But today is Bob Marley's birthday. And I have to ask you, do you think or do you think that if Bob Marley was alive today, would he would he have done anything differently? If so, what? Um I think um if he was alive today he would be moving to joining stronger um, in terms of unionism and collective bargain arrangements. Because I think I hear a lot of people saying, oh, there is no organization for, for the music industry. But I think that the, the argument should be there, there was an organization and it still is an organization, which is the JFMAU, which is the longest serving union in the Caribbean, right? So those standards were created. So I think Bob would be working with those standards to make sure that the music industry would be as strong as it can be in terms of collective bargaining and how we move forward in the industry. Yeah, indeed. Um, thank you so much for joining us. That was Lowell Omar Lawson, acting president of the JFMAU. When we come back, we're talking about the vegan life.
Sunkom. <laughs>